Now, let's get started, inmate. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to my Ryuji build guide for Persona 5 Royal. This is going to be the first in a series of eight guide videos I'm going to be making for Persona 5 Royal, where I'm going to be going over all party members' best equipment, Persona skill set, best way to use them, as well as discussing the best parties each party member fits into. Due to not wanting to be shot by the Atlas Police, the footage you were seeing was mostly from the before the third semester added into Royal. However, I will be showing off the third Persona evolution for Ryuji and discussing the new skill that he gets from that, some of the skills from the Jazz Club that are only found in the third semester, and there will also be some third semester party spoilers shown, so viewer discussion is advised. I will also be talking about some items obtained from DLC Personas, however, I will provide non-DLC alternatives where relevant. Also, I am assuming you have downloaded the Legacy DLC pack, because why would you not? And without further riffraff, on to the meat and potatoes of this video. So, starting us off with equipment, Ryuji's best melee weapon is the Imprisoned Mjolnir. You get this from itemizing the level 64 chariot persona Thor during an alarm. It has the highest attack value out of all of Ryuji's weapons, as well as having the added side effect of dealing electric damage. Now, this is really, really niche, but it does enable Ryuji to still knock down electric weak enemies when he has no SP, a rather common occurrence considering Ryuji's exceedingly low SP pull. Now, Ryuji's best ranged weapon is the Megado Blaster. You can get this by itemizing Shiva, level 82 Judgment Persona during an alarm. As will be the case for all weapons from here on out, max damage should be the go-to, as while the accuracy loss is quite significant, and accuracy is very valuable, generally it's never low enough that you have no chance of hitting, and you're usually going to have more than enough ammo to hit a knockdown even if you miss. The best armor for Ryuji is the Tantric Oath R. You get this by itemizing Satan, the level 92 Judgment Persona during an alarm. This does require you to be at max confidant rank with Judgment, but it's achieved naturally through story progression, so you're gonna have it regardless. Now this has the highest defense value of all armor types, with decently high evasion rate to boot, but it also happens to come with added effect of heavily reducing all magic damage dealt to the wielder, an exceedingly valuable skill. Now for accessories, as will be the case for pretty much every party member in the game, Shadowbout R is the best accessory. Shadowbout R has the Invigorate 3 effect of restoring 7 SP each turn in battle, as well as providing plus 3 stats to all of Ryuji's stats. Now, <clears throat> to break this down why this is so good, SP regeneration is very valuable in general, especially for party members. For Joker, it's not as valuable because he has access to things like Victory Cry or Spellmaster, which is going to, you know, drastically decrease his SP usage. But um, party members don't have that. The most they can get is Spellmaster, but you can only give it to one person, and it's also on a Jazz Club event very, very late into the game, so you're not always going to have it. So the only way they can get SP back is through items, or doing this, using an SP regen accessory. So having it passively is very, very valuable, especially in those long dungeon runs. Now stats, increasing stats is also about as valuable as having passive SP generation. But again, not as valuable on Joker, but on party members it is. Joker has the ability to pretty much speed personas, level them up, and then increase their skills exponentially for all of his personas. Your party doesn't. So having that additional three stats, that access to addition, an additional three stats is very, very, very valuable. It just all across the board increases the performance drastically. Now you get this from itemizing the DLC Persona Izanagi no Okami. Now if you don't have the DLC, the specifically Izanagi no Okami, um, the other option is if I can find it would be... I don't seem to have it here. Well, it's the SP Adhesive 3 that you get from Takemi's Clinic. Uh, I think you have to be rank 5. 
Anyways, that gives you the Invigorate 3 effect, which is probably the most valuable effect out of the two, but it doesn't have the plus 3 on all stats. It's ultimately completely inferior to this, but if you don't have the DLC, hey, it's really useful anyways. Now, other options you can use is the Crystal Skull R. Now, this gives you plus 6 on all stats. Again, stat points on party members, very useful. And this is double the effect that is on the Shiny Bat R. However, its other effect isn't as useful. Angelic Grace increases evasion from all magic attacks except for Mighty. It is useful, it is good, but in comparison the SP regen is generally more useful on the long run because though evasion rate is really good, it's better to evade a move than it is to get hit by it. You can't really get it high enough that you can consistently or reliably dodge everything. So I don't really find it as useful. Um, you get this from itemizing the Crystal Skull Treasure Persona Drone Alarm. I think you can get this from the lower ends of uh, Mementos. Uh, you have, I believe it's in the late, late game, however. Now, other options, these are all going to be uh, from the, the free DLC, Legacy DLC pack. Your other options are the team classes. 50% EXP increases your XP gain. Are you XP grinding? 15% extra. Very useful. You want money? 15% extra money. Seize armband. Good. Um, the arm PC. Plus 3 in all stats, same as the shiny belt R. And light boost, which increases max SP by 20. I see this as being kind of like a budget, like just a worse, a bit worse version of the shiny belt R. Because it gives you the plus 3 stats. And it gives you max SP, but max SP is generally worse than having passive SP regen, especially in the long run. For short term, this is probably more useful, but nah, generally, passive SP regeneration is better. <coughs> uh, the Gauntlet. This increases evasion from criticals and magical attacks. Now, I know I did talk shit about <laughs> Angelic Grace and evading before but again evasion is still kind of useful it's still good to dodge things and this is pretty decent um i wouldn't use it if you have crystal skull R because obviously it's better but hey it's, it's an option and then the last one i want to talk about is the kuzuno heart tubes this gives you a slightly nerf like a half effect of spellmaster and Armor master rolled in one now this is pretty good because obviously ryuji's hp costs are going to be high and he's going to be bleeding constantly so being able to reduce those even more is really good so uh, i should mention so for the dlc items you can get this from uh joker's room the cardboard box in joker's room once you download the dlc so now onto the persona build ryuji is a very physical damage leaning character his trait, Raging Tempest, is pretty indicative of this, providing a chance to increase all allies' physical attack damage by 40%. In addition, he possesses the second highest natural strength stat among all the playable party members, second only to Yusuke, while having the absolute highest endurance and by extension max, max HP in the game. In exchange, however, Ryuji's other stats are less impressive with the lowest magic and agility stat in the game, lower than even Futaba's, and a rather middling luck stat to boot. So with this in mind, the best skills for Ryuji are God's Hand, Agnirstra, Zeodyne, Ma Zeodyne, Charge, Ma Tarukaja, Evade Win, and Elect Boost. Now, breaking these down one by one, God's Hand is your typical bread and butter colossal damage to a single physical Colossal physical damage to a single foe, sorry. Um, it's your bread and butter, you just use this, kill things, things die, strong skill. HP cost is really high, but again, he does have a very high endurance stat, which means he does have a lot of HP, and as I will talk about in the second semester part of this conversation, he does get Arms Master, and you can also use Kuzunaha Jude if you desperately want that, um, don't want to bleed as much. Igneostra is the AoE variant of God's Hand. Medium physical damage offers 1 to 3 times. High HP costs. 
Uh, important to note here, this will do more damage if all three hits hit than God's Hand. So sometimes it might be worth rolling the dice and going for that random chance of getting those three hits if you really desperately really want to kill something. Um, next one is Zeodyne and Marzeodyne. I'll talk about these as a group. Um, you use these for knockdowns. Um, Ryuji's magic status, pathetic. This will do no damage. Even with Elect Boost, which we will talk about as well here, strengthens Elect skills with by 25%. Even with that, your damage is absolutely pathetic. 46 magic is nothing, and yeah, these do no damage. You use these for knockdowns. Generally, you're probably more likely to use Marziodyne just because the scenarios where you're going to want to take advantage of, although attacks and knocking people down, are in AoE situations. So, this won't get as much use, but sometimes you have one enemy, you want to knock them down, hey, use the Odyne, otherwise AoE. Then, Charge, it is next physical attack, deals over double the damage. It does, I believe, when you use it, 2.5% damage that it would normally do, so it's always worth using charge and then God's Hand instead of two God's Hand, it will always do more damage. This is his bread and butter, basically, bread and butter combo, charge, God's Hand, dead, charge, God's Hand, charge, God's Hand, very strong skill. Not much else to say, it's a good skill. Then Martara Kaja, this is actually one of his best skills. Um, it is what makes the party, his party with Makoto and Yusuke, the synergy, so great is because with all three of them, Mataro Kaja, then Masuku Kaja on Yusuke, and then Maraku Kaja on Makoto, you basically have a free Heat Riser. Um, AoE Heat Riser. And AoE Heat Risers are not in this game, except the Thermo Ply on um, Joker, which I will mention and I will talk about, but sometimes you don't want to use that setup because it's a very complicated setup and it's hard to get. But um, yeah, this is a very good skill. It is, gives him great team support, and the synergy is amazing with Yusuke and Makoto. And then finally, Evade Win. Pretty basic, great increases evasion from wind skills. Um, Ryuji's weak to wind. You want to dodge those wind skills as much as you want. This in conjunction with Tantric Oak R basically means he has a very, very, very low chance of getting hit by wind skills, which is great because you don't want to get knocked down. Because it's bad. Anyways, on to the second semester. Now, for the third semester, Muji gains access to a couple new skills, all of which pretty much just buff him and help him do the job that he wants to do, which is hitting hard physically. Ryuji, in the third semester's persona, upgrades to William from Satan Taisei, and his trait upgrades along with it, going to Eccentric Temper. Increasing the physical attack damage buff that it used to give to, from 40% to 80%, so double. This basically just helps him do even more physical damage and helps his party members do even more damage sometimes. He also gains a skill, Fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit is basically an AoE charge. Now, as you look at my build here, you may notice I also have Charge here and Fighting Spirit. And the reason for this is pretty obvious if you look at the SP costs. Charge costs 15, and Fighting Spirit costs 80. Now, that is massive. That is a massive, massive difference. So, generally, you don't always want to be using Fighting Spirit. You want to be using Fighting Spirit when you have turns where you can set up a massive amount of physical damage and charge for whenever then. Because if you spam Fighting Spirit, he's going to run out. He is going to run out so quickly. Again, his SP pool is... I believe the lowest in the game, so you really, really want to use it conservatively. But there are situations where you want that big damage for all your party members, and this is so good. This is such a great skill, especially for units who don't naturally have charge or have to use it or gain it through a Jazz Club event, which you know you're not always going to be able to get in a singular playthrough. But if someone like Yusuke or the or Kasumi. They don't have charge naturally, this gives them it. Great skill. In addition, he can learn Arms Master from a Jazz Club event on the 22nd of January. Again, decreased HP costs of skills by half. Very useful. Cuts down the cost 
of uh, his physical damage skills, so he's not bleeding nearly as hard. 86 HP, I believe it was 169 when you didn't have this. Just, this is such a key move. You've got to have it. You've got to use it. Uh, so what I replaced was Zeodyne and Elect Boost. Like I said in the first half discussion, Elect Boost is useless. It does not increase his damage by that much. His magic damage is poor anyway, so it was kind of just a placeholder ultimately. Now, Mazeodyne. Why did I keep Mazeodyne over... Whoops. Over Zeodyne. So, like I said again in the first half, generally the situations where you want to be using his um, magic is to get knockdowns, which are generally going to be in AoE situations. There aren't going to be many situations where you want to use his single target, Zeodyne. So, generally, Mazeodyne's the go-to. It does cost more, but, you know... Overall, it's more useful. With all this in consideration, the best party members you want to pair with Ryuji are Yusuke, Makoto, Samire, and Haru. Ryuji, Yusuke, and Makoto have great synergy together, with each of them providing one of each of the three primary buffs. Ryuji with attack with Mataru Kaja, Yusuke with evasion and hit rate with Masuku Kaja, and Makoto with defense with Maroku Kaja, giving you access to what is essentially heat riser on your whole party, albeit by burning your party members' turns. This means you're able to fully buff your party and debuff the enemy using Joker on turn 1, setting you up to deal some massive damage on the next turn. Ryuji, Sumire, and Haru create a very powerful crit-heavy physical and gun team, taking advantage of Ryuji's ability to AoE charge the whole party, and Sumire's brave stat increasing the crit rate of the whole party. With those two combos, in conjunction with Haru's one-shot kill, and Sumire's sword dance slash masquerade already having an enhanced crit chance at base, you will be able to do some massive crit chance, but time passing after each one increasing your damage even further. This can be very handy for the crit phase of the Lorenzo Super Boss. When all is said and done, Ryuji is quite easily one of the best party members in Persona 5 Royal. His combination of high physical damage capabilities, in conjunction with great team support, makes him a great pick for some of the harder challenges in the game. His synergy with Makoto and Yusuke also cannot be understated, making what is arguably one of the strongest parties in the game, and his crit capabilities with Haru and Samire make him an excellent choice for the crit phase in the Levenza boss fight. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Going to be going through each party member as they show up in the story, so the next one up will be everyone's favorite go-to-sleep cat, Morgana. Peace.